welcome to the channel everybody. I'm gonna be going through a couple of different rig setups for a steelhead. Steelhead is actually the state fish for Washington and a steelhead is essentially a rainbow trout that makes itself out to the ocean. Now steelhead are often called the fish of a thousand casts so let's hope that it doesn't take anywhere close to that to catch a steelhead this week. So over the next two weeks I'm gonna be fishing from the west side of Washington to the east side and hopefully a couple of steelhead, maybe we'll even catch some salmon as their run ends here in a little bit. So I'm gonna be going over a couple of rigs here. So some of these rigs are gonna include beads it's here and in various sizes. So it all depends on where in the strike zone, where in the water column you're trying to catch these fish. Now we can go with a bead setup. We can obviously go with a couple of different spinner setups. We have a worm and jig, jig head setup. We can't also forget just a regular jig setup. So I like to rig a couple of setups before I go out. I wanna have at least three or four setups prepared already, so that way I'm not out there fumbling around in the cold. So let's start with the rod setup. So on this rod right now, I have this spider wire, and that's spider wire stealth braid. It's 30 pound braid, and I'm running it on this 2500 series Fluger reel. The spinning reel is very lightweight, and it's paired for this Akuma rod, so it's perfect. Now, if I'm presenting any type of slip float or bobber dogging on the bottom or even just bouncing off the bottom with weights, I like to go with a spinning setup because it's light tackle most times on the other end, depending how fast the water is. So I like to be able to present it the best way. And I think spinning reels provide the best setup for that. And this coming off the reel, I'm going to make sure I run this to a leader. So I'm going to take my fluorocarbon leader and I'm going to connect these two. So I'm going to be connecting my main line here to my leader using a uninot. So let's go ahead and tie a uninot. So I'm going to take my main line, drop it down into that hole, pull it out, and then run it over the top. Just like that. And then I'm going to hold that. I'm going to hold them together here. I'm going to run that line over. Okay, I'm going to run it back in here. I'm going to put some saliva on the knot to tighten it. And I'm going to pull my tag ends just to tighten it. And we have a strong unit knot right there. And we're going to cut these tag ends. So now that we've cleaned up the tag ends here, let's move on to the slip setup. So now that we've put the main line onto this, let's get the bobber on. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna put on is gonna be a bobber stop. So there's a bobber stop and a bead on here. I'm gonna slide that bobber stop onto my leader line. That's gonna stop my float. Sometimes it's good to have two of those bobber stops on there, or if you have the tie-in bobber stop, that works a little bit better. Sometimes I need two because it'll move around a little bit more depending on the water. So I'm going with a three quarter ounce float because I want to pair it with the weight that I want to use. Now I'm going to use a three quarter ounce slinky. Now the slinky I like a little bit better because it hardly ever snags on the bottom. All right, and then I'm going to hook the end of that leader to a barrel swivel. And I'm just going to use a fisherman's knot just like this. So then that little head in there is actually going to hold my weight. Okay, and I'm gonna run that slinky there. Now, when that floats in the water, it's imperative that we get it sitting upright. So in order to get it sitting upright, you're always gonna need to mend your line. You don't want the line getting too far down the drift or too far in the back. You want it to be perfectly perpendicular in the water and you want to make sure you mend your line so it's right on path with the float so it provides the best presentation in the water. For a steelhead, you want to put that presentation right in front of them. I like this spot right in front of that rock. So off this presentation, just with that swivel, the slinky, 
in my float here. The first thing I could easily just run is going to be a jig setup. So I've got my jig head and I already have line tied to it. And then at the end of my line, I have three weights. These split shot weights are gonna be close to the end here because I wanna try to get that I'm gonna try and get that jig down as quickly as I can. Now off this jig, you could also run another bead on the end of that, which is a setup I might set up on my second setup. Uh, but first setup, I'll have this on hand. All right, so I'm gonna rig up a worm here. So this is a four inch worm, pink worm, and I have a black jig head. So it's cut off at the top. I'm gonna to slip this right along the middle. And then right in the middle of that little sack area, I'm gonna pull this out. Perfect, and this is gonna be my second setup. So off of this, I'm gonna run another leader of about two to three feet to this. The last rigging I'm gonna set up is gonna be a double bead setup. Now I'm gonna run a larger bead, not this color though. I'm going to use this color. So I've actually had really good luck with coho and chinook salmon on these bigger pink beads. Oh, 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 fish, fish. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Sure. What did he hit? The the. He was on South Beach. He was on South Beach. <laughs> So I'm gonna run a big bead on the top and then a second bead on the bottom, which is gonna be one of these smaller, different colored beads. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut about two and a half feet of this leader for the first bead. And then I'm gonna use one of these bead stoppers to keep that bead where I want it. So bead stopper. Next up, put in that bead on there. All right, so we got the bead stopper on there. Next thing I want to do is fish this bead to that stopper. So I want that stopper right in there. Perfect. And then my hook is going to go on this end. Okay, we got that hook on. So we got the hook and the bead. So I'm going to move this bead down closer to the hook. And I want about two to three inches between the bead and the actual hook. That'll allow the fish to get hooked. Now that I've rigged the first one, I'm gonna rig another one of these and tie it to the bottom of this. I'm gonna go with a smaller, different colored bead on the second one. I've actually really started to like this color. It resembles a row, kind of an older egg, just drifting. So if you don't have a bead stopper, a good alternative is just a bobber stop. I'm gonna run this to this hook here. Okay, so second setup. Gonna look something like this. Gonna move this down just a little bit more. All right, and then I'm gonna connect that second one, this guy, to this guy. And I'm just going to use a regular fisherman's knot here as well. Now these two beads will attach directly to my slinky here. Now if at any time I wanted to change out this slinky for something else, like just a drop shot weight or something like that, I definitely can. And depending on what the water looks like, I might even switch out my float to something maybe a little bit smaller or a different colored float that's a little bit easier to see in the water. 
Well, hopefully that was pretty informational. We're gonna be using these rigs over the next couple of days. Like I said, two weeks of steelhead fishing. We're gonna be fishing from the west to east side of Washington. So follow along, those videos will be dropping here in a little bit.